Apple's been hiding back its true potential from us. We don't even know its final form yet. Microsoft wants to judge your PC and Intel fixing all of the games. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. And let's go ahead and start off this episode by talking about Apple and their potential upcoming multi-chip module because it's been found while picturing the die that's on the M1 Max chip that Apple just released that it actually has a spot for interconnections so that they can combine them to create even bigger chips than they currently have. Now, this is just speculation as you're seeing here in the picture, but you could combine two M1 Maxes together to create the Duo or the Ultra or the Quadro, whatever they want to call these things, but they can actually have a multi-chip module design based on all of this up to 40 CPU cores and 128 GPU cores. And one of the things that's really interesting with all of this is not just the fact that the M1 Max has it, but rather that the M1 Pro does not have it, which means that it was intentionally added by Apple onto this larger chip, potentially future-proofing some of their designs to make it so that they can scale up this chip and make it so that they're supporting higher-end products that they're releasing, such as maybe the upcoming Mac Pro or even the iMac Pro. You have the M1 Max that's currently in the MacBook Pro. You wanna go beyond that, you scale it with just what we already have. That way it makes it easy for development as well as the fact that we kind of already know the performance. And if you're getting roughly double the performance out of something that's already out on the market for an iMac Pro would make a really good deal out of it. Obviously, Apple has already kind of taken the world by storm with their M1 chips, the M1 Pro and the M1 Max also kind of hitting the scene and being really worth their weight in gold. What do you think of potentially quadrupling that and having the M1 Max quad jump? Let me know down in the comments. My accent just decided to pop up as I was saying that last part right there. OK, well, let's talk about how the Xbox app mm -hmm, gonna be uh, judging your PC to tell you whether or not it is worthy to play the video game that you are about to embark upon. I should probably stop. It's time to it's time to end that. Microsoft adding a label to tell you whether or not your PC is capable of playing games that are on the Xbox store, such as Forza Horizon 4, as you can see here, saying things like uh, should play great on this PC. It's not available for all games as of yet, and things will pop up such as performance check not available. It just reminds me of yesteryear where I would always go to system requirements lab and try to find out, can I run it? And just uh, searching for a game, downloading their software, trying to compare it against what I have. My goodness, that was ages. That had to have been like a decade ago. I was heavily on this site, just being like, can I buy this game? Should I even buy this game? My goodness, can my 8600 GT even support what's going on here? Let me know if you've ever been on this website. I want to hear from you down below. Microsoft wants to take that away from you. And the Matrix wants to take reality away from you, especially with the Unreal Engine 5 demo that's currently available on the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X. The Matrix Awakens is now available for you to download in case you want to experience that ahead of the Matrix Resurrections movie that's dropping later this month. They have a small trailer where it goes from this transition into Unreal Engine 5 Keanu, my friends. In case you want to see what Keanu Reeves has looked like in video games from 2005, 2019, 2020, and now 2021. My goodness, how video games have gotten more lifelike and how lifelike can video games be if you can't even play them, especially when you're upgrading to the latest generation of processors. Intel was having some problems with DRMs that were available on a lot of the games. It was a list that was, I think, 50 games long at some point. Well, now it is down to just three until fixing a lot of those games, working with Denuvo to get patches out for those. It was over 90 titles, excuse me. That's a whole lot. So they have done the work to put it in something that probably should have been done before launch, but we're here a little bit after launch and now it should be fixed. The three games, obviously, that you should be worried about now are Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Madden 22, and the most important game of all time, Fernbot Simulator, my friends. How can you simulate the Fernbot? This game came out in 2016 and has riveted audiences ever since. For the last five years, people have been glued to their screens on the Fernbot Simulator and they can't upgrade to Alder Lake because of it until hopefully we'll get this fixed sometime soon. A great injustice was done to the world, my friends. A lot of people seem to think that YouTube's copyright claim system is an injustice. It doesn't really work all that well. Well, in an attempt to 
provide some transparency with regards to how copyright's done on YouTube. YouTube themselves published a report showing off just how many copyright claims are issued every single year, as well as what the overturn rate is. So there are roughly over 700 million copyright claims issued between January and June of this year, which 99% of them were not challenged by the creator whatsoever. Only half a percentage were disputed by the creator. However, of the ones that were disputed by the creator, 60% were found in favor of the creator, whereas 40% were found in favor of the ones who issued it. So you can see the vast majority of copyright claims not even being challenged by the people who received them. And YouTube also noting that manual claims were challenged at twice the rate of the content ID system, whether or not that's because creators are not likely to go up against the content ID system or the content ID system is a little bit better off than people who might be manually spiting claims stuff. It's hard to say, but it's very clear that at least according to YouTube's report, the vast majority of claims that are out there just actually are just dealt with and nobody ever even hears about them. But you're here to hear about the hottest deals out on the internet. So let's get into UFD deals. We got a couple laptop deals for you, my friends. You're looking for something to go back to school with in January, starting school again, whatever. Lenovo has the Yoga 6, which I actually purchased for my wife last year, but this had the Ryzen 4500U. This one has a Ryzen 7 5700U. It's only going for $750. I absolutely love this little laptop. It's a little neat because it has like a fabric cover. It's kind of cool. Uh, it's $750 right now, which is an absolute steal for 5700U, 16 gigs of RAM, 512 gig SSD, and a 13 inch form factor. I'm actually really impressed by this price. And we also have a high-end gaming laptop in case you're looking for that. Has the 11th gen core i7, RTX 3080, 32 gigs of RAM, one terabyte SSD, going for $1,900. That's $500 off right now. Links for that will be in the video description. And I'm gonna link you to some crypto stonks news. Bitcoin, uh, pinching on up just a little bit as it's recovering from that little dip it had on Friday, still below $50,000, still below a trillion dollar market cap, sitting at 49,275. Ethereum up 2% to be just under a $500 billion market cap and sitting at 4230. Dogecoin also increasing roughly 5% to sit at 17.6 cents. The meme stonks, mixed bag right there. GameStop down slightly 2.18% to be at 168.28. And AMC down just a little bit as well to be at 28.60. And I am gonna be down and out of here. That's right. I ended this episode on crypto stonks, throwing you a little curveball. You weren't expecting that. And I bet you also weren't expecting me. Shameless monetization insert. Brett. Flesh Brett will complain to his editor if this video is shorter than eight minutes. And so I was created to satiate Brett's hunger for ad revenue and spare his editor from his wrath. And now that I have successfully wasted your valuable time. I will let Flesh Brett close out today's hot news. But what you can expect is that I will be back here, same place, same time, hopefully tomorrow, as long as load shedding doesn't get in the way or our editor doesn't have her electricity stolen. Why would I jinx that? Why would I say that? I don't know. See you tomorrow. Bye.